So assuming that you have tested your live app on iOS and or Android, depending which platforms you are deploying to, you can of course now deploy a build version that you want to publish publicly via the app stores. So I'm going to say that this is going to be my first major version here. So this is going to be version one. And once this is deployed, we can go into App Store Connect and our Google Play console in order to publish this build on the respective app stores. First, let's deploy it. So as before, this is going to take 30 to 45 minutes on average. So I'll come back when it's complete. So my build has finished and it has been deployed to App Store Connect and my Google Play console. I'm gonna start here with publishing for the Apple App Store. And what we wanna be doing here is providing all of the information that's gonna appear on our App Store listing. Now, Apple has their own guide on all of the different pieces of information that you can add here. And I'll link to this in the description for this lesson. One specific thing to call out is these app screenshots. Now there's various tools that you can use to generate these. And I will leave some links in the description for this video for some options that you can use. Another thing to call out is that you'll have to provide a URL here that includes information on how users, customers of your app can contact you. In my case, this is just a page that I've created on the web version of my app. So I've literally created this support page here with just some really basic information. You can also host this in a Google Doc or a Notion document. And there are also tools like this one, which can host this support URL, as well as your privacy policy and other things for you. I'll provide a link to this in the description for this lesson. And then importantly, we want to add the version number that corresponds to our build number. And then right down the bottom, we are gonna associate that build that we just generated with this App Store listing. So our one is this latest version here. And if you haven't done it already, you will have to go through this compliance step. You'll also want to provide some information to Apple because a real human is going to log into your application and poke around and make sure that it meets their guidelines before it's published on the App Store. One of the things that you'll have to provide is the login details for a user who the Apple reviewer can log in as and I suggest that you create some data for this user, populate the app with stuff they can see and do, filter, delete, that kind of thing. And then you should also provide your own details here. You can also choose whether to automatically publish the app if and when it passes Apple's review process. Then once you're ready, hit save and then add for review to send it to Apple to review. And in my case, there's a bunch of stuff that I still need to add. And once you've added this information, you'll wanna to go to app information. And here there's some additional information that we want to provide, including a short subtitle. This Apple tells us will appear like this within the app store. You wanna choose a category for your app and specify whether you are displaying any third party content in your app. And then we should also fill out this age rating section here and then you can simply hit save. So after we've saved this, we should also under app privacy, go through this little wizard here. So if you are doing any kind of third party or product analytics, you may want to select yes here. In our app, we're not collecting anything, so I'm gonna hit no. And under this privacy policy section, I'm going to paste in the URL to our privacy policy. We did touch on this earlier in the course. Basically, you can host this wherever you want. Again, a Google Doc, a Notion Doc, or in our case, I actually have a page in our web app with the privacy policy stored. So we're gonna save this and hit publish. Now, once you've added all this information, we can go back to this prepare for submission step and click add for review. And Apple will tell you if you're missing anything here. So we're missing this section. 
So we have to add some pricing information. Arrows is just a free app. So I'm gonna choose here, zero dollars. And then we also will set up where in the world we want our app to be available to download. I'm just gonna select here all countries or regions. And then once we've added all this information, we can click add for review. And now that our app has been submitted, we're going to wait to hear back from Apple as to the status of our review. Now for publishing to Google Play, we want to go over to the test and release section here, then this production track section, and we want to create a new release. From here, we're going to choose the build that we recently deployed, so this version one, and we can add a release note here as well. And then we're just gonna go through each of the steps here that Google provides. So they're gonna tell us various things that we are going to have to fix. And we can simply go through each of these in step here. So Google is gonna go through a process of reviewing our app just like Apple. And we want to provide them some login details for our application so that they can test properly. So I'm just gonna go through each of these steps for my app. And of course, if you're following along, then you should do the same for your app. Now, one thing just to call out within the data safety step is that assuming that your users can create data within your app as ours can because users can log in and of course create trips and diary entries, we have to provide a link with some information telling users how they can delete their account. And I've achieved this by creating a new page within my web app with some information about how they can do this. Again, this is something that you can host wherever you want. A Google Doc, a Notion Doc are just some simple examples. Now, once you've gone through all these content sections, we're gonna move down to this bottom section here. So you'll choose your app category and tags, add the contact details for your app, which will be shown on Google Play. And then finally, we can set up our Google Play Store listing. Now, Google has a bunch of information that you can use to set this up. But in large part, this is going to be very similar to when we publish on the Apple App Store in that we are going to provide a bunch of public facing information, including screenshots that users can see before they download our app. So I've gone ahead and added all of my listing asset details here including the screenshots. Now again, there's a bunch of tools that can help with creating these, which I'll link to in the description for this lesson. And when we're done here, we're gonna hit save. Now, if we go back to the dashboard, this is gonna guide us through the next steps here. So we now want to create our production release. So we're gonna preview and confirm the release here. And we've got this release that I started creating earlier. So we need to add the app bundle that we recently created, this version one. So this is what we are considering our production release version. And we can add a little release note here. And let's make sure that we save as draft before we do anything here and then hit next. And if you're like me, you will have missed some steps here. So to fix this, we're gonna go into production we're gonna come down into countries, regions, and we're going to add the countries or regions where we want our app to be available. And for this to work, we are just going to select all countries, regions from this drop down here. So now that we've added our countries and regions, there's one more error that I remember that we had to resolve. So I'm just gonna go through to see what that was. So we've got to add a declaration about the photo and video permissions that we are accessing. So we just have to add some explanation here of why we're accessing the media on the user's device. So now that I've done that, I'm coming back into our release section here and I'm going to hit save and back in the publishing overview now, looks like we've got one more declaration that we need to submit. And with all of this set up now back on the publishing overview, I should be able to hit send these changes for review. So now that our app is in review, we're just gonna wait back to hear from Google. They're gonna tell us if they find any issues or hopefully if our app is approved, then we'll be ready to publish it onto the Google Play Store.
All right, so it's been about 24 hours and Apple has approved my app for distribution on the App Store. Now you can view the listing from within App Store Connect under this app information tab. And right down the bottom, you've got the option here to view it on the App Store. And so if I open that link on my phone, there it is. What you can also do if you have a landing page set up in your web app is add a button with a workflow to actually open that App Store link using this open an external website action. And you can paste in there the link. And what that means, of course, is if they click this, it's going to open up the app within the App Store.